Inspired by true stories, the movie is set in World War II, where the Nazis have seized control of France, leaving Great Britain isolated. Prime Minister Winston Churchill swiftly forms a covert spy agency, the Special Operations Executive, or SOE2, disrupt the Nazi war machine. Its mission in France, place spies everywhere to build resistance and conduct sabotage. But there are no experienced spies for this new type of warfare. A call must go out to amateurs. The first few are dropped behind enemy lines to begin a secret war. But agents behind enemy lines don't seem to last long. Long. In August of 1941, Nazi soldiers detained a woman, repeatedly dunking her head in a bucket of water to extract her identity. The woman persistently claims her name is Bridget. The scene then shifts to three months prior, in the special executive offices of Special Operations in London. Christopher informs his superior Maurice Buckmaster that the Germans are locating their signals faster than anticipated. A slip-up from one of their spies caused him to get captured and executed. He was carrying British cigarettes. Vera Atkins promptly heads to the office. As she enters, Buck Master informs her that they need replacements. He tells Vera he wants her in charge of recruiting attractive women who can operate in France. When she asks why the sudden change of heart, as everyone was opposed to that idea, Buckmaster explains that they went to Winston Churchill, and even though he growled a bit, he ultimately agreed to let women serve as spies, as they'll be more inconspicuous. Simultaneously, Virginia Hall, an American, is barred from working as a diplomat due to her wooden leg, which she injured while hunting. Virginia has long aspired to a diplomatic career, but the United States deems her unfit because of her prosthesis. She has resided in Europe for a while and now works in an office in London, still yearning for a significant opportunity. In early 1941, Virginia and Vera accidentally meet at a party. Vera is recruiting women for a special unit within Britain's new Secret Service Agency and later enlists her. They also enlist Nouri Nayat Khan, a British citizen and Muslim of Indian descent, born in Russia to an American mother and an Indian father. At a large house in Scotland, the recruits, both men and women, are trained in espionage sabotage, and survival skills. Noor and Virginia share a room, but only know each other by their aliases, Madeline and Bridget. Noor expresses her doubts as a competent spy, saying she can't even lift her radio. Moreover, as she's a pacifist, she doesn't want to take part in killing people, even the Nazis. Virginia reassures her that they're teaching them to survive. Virginia then shows Noor her wooden leg, which she named Cuthbert. She tells her it's lighter, remarking on Noor's earlier difficulty carrying her radio. As Vera discusses the recruits with Buckmaster and Christopher, Buckmaster is doubtful of Noor, but Vera explains that despite her petite and frail appearance, Noor excels at using a wireless radio to transmit secret messages and codes. Though she holds pacifist beliefs due to her Sufi upbringing, Vera believes she could become an excellent spy with the right chance. Buckmaster then reviews Virginia's file remarks on her wooden leg as a liability, but Vera, on the contrary, states that it's only below the knee and would be the perfect cover. She says no one will suspect a pretty American with a limp being guilty of anything. So, Buckmaster reluctantly agrees and tells Vera to progress Virginia to the next level of training. As seen at the beginning of the movie, she is subjected to simulated drowning to test her resilience under torture, and Virginia passes the test. Vera enters the room and praises Virginia for her loyalty. Shortly after, Buckmaster arrives and lets her know that she is accepted to be their first female field agent. Even though her training isn't complete, they need people on the ground. Buckmaster informs her that if she does decide to join them, her odds of coming home are no more than 50%. He tells her to take a moment to consider their offer, but she agrees almost instantly. Now the first female spy, Virginia will be posing as an American journalist and heading to a location devoid of enemy troops. Her mission is to establish a support network for other agents, providing funds, safe houses, and other necessities. She will also relay information to the Baker Street office about conditions in France to aid their efforts. In September 1941, Virginia traveled to Lyon, France. Her first contact is Dr. Raoul Chavin. Agent Alphonse is already there, operating the wireless transmitter. Virginia carries poison with her in case she is captured by the Nazis. When she meets Dr. Chavain, he informs her about a spy named James who broke his leg during a parachute drop. James is hiding in a rural house, and Virginia decides to bring him back to Britain. She first meets with Alphonse in a restaurant, but mistakenly orders a gin on a Sunday, which is prohibited, attracting the attention of authorities who demand her papers. Virginia begins persuading the French to join the resistance against the Germans. She also documents new German-imposed regulations, such as rationing food, and requisitioning farm produce. Women are forbidden to buy cigarettes, and Jewish people must register their residences. She and Alphonse identify a landing site for a plane to evacuate the injured agent. Later, Vera and Buckmaster debate whether Noor should be deployed as a wireless operator in the field. Eventually, Noor is added to the team and will accompany the injured agent. Noor bids her mother farewell before departing. At home, Vera's mother, Hilda, notices Vera gazing at the full moon and believes she misses her boyfriend, a soldier who has gone missing. 
missing. Shortly after, Noor, codenamed Madeline, sends a signal to Virginia, codenamed Bridget, via wireless radio. Noor narrowly avoids capture when attempting to leave the safe house basement. Virginia trades extra food coupons with Sister Frances for access to a nunnery. Over lunch, Virginia discusses Noor with Dr. Chavan and asks to hide her in a basement. She also shares the story of losing her leg while hunting. Virginia is fortunate to have chocolate for dessert and receives soap, both luxuries in wartime France. Virginia is taken aback by the widespread anti-Semitism and Nazi censorship in France. After securing Noor in Chavane's home, Father Robert Alesh, known for his anti-Nazi sermons, arrives and requests Bridget's assistance. Bridget eavesdrops on the conversation between the priest and doctor, doubting the priest's sincerity. Meanwhile, Vera faces challenges from British officials who discover she is a Romanian Jew. Buckmaster reassures Vera of her importance, despite Britain declaring war on Romania, Finland, and Hungary. However, Vera's citizenship papers are denied. After the Pearl Harbor attack on December 7, 1941, the United States entered the war, compromising Virginia's cover as an American reporter, since Americans were now barred from France. Vera suggests a new identity for Virginia, complete with a different hairstyle and the codename Philomene. Father Alicia is allowed to communicate with London, and Noor is relocated to Paris. While traveling to her new assignment, the train is stopped and searched. She is almost caught by the Nazis, with her wireless set. But the Nazis find another resistance fighter with a bomb and arrest her instead. Virginia excels in aiding agents passing through Lyon, discovering a Nazi supply line, and planning to sabotage a supply train. Noor seeks a new safe house, but finds it compromised and is advised to leave by local prostitutes. When the Northern Circuit in Paris is compromised, Virginia, Alphonse, Agent Paul, and George, a local mechanic, collaborate to plant explosives on a railway track. However, the police apprehend George and seize their wireless device. The remaining team devises a plan to send George a wrench concealed in a package to facilitate his escape. Isabella delivers the Monopoly game with the wrench, but the guards insist she play the game before passing it to the prisoners, who then use it to break out. The group aims to transport the escapees to the Abbey, but is intercepted by a Vichy policeman. In the ensuing struggle, they kill the officer and reach the Abbey to hide George and Paul. Noor reconnects with a friend named Giselle, who agrees to shelter her temporarily. During this period, Noor gets courage from Giselle, who is Hebrew, and contacts Vera, telling her she decided to stay in France to help rebuild the Northern Circuit instead of returning home. By November 1942, the Nazi presence in Lyon increased. A Nazi officer named Klaus Barbie arrives, determined to find Philomene, Virginia's codename. He coerces Father Robert Alesh, a double agent, into assisting him. Dr. Chavane receives a wanted poster with Virginia's photo and warns her to flee south to Perpignan. Dr. Chavane is later captured and tortured, and Alphonse is killed publicly by the Nazis. Virginia boards a train to Perpignan. Tragically, Giselle's boyfriend sells Noor to the Nazis for a lot of money. They also find her notebook have all her codes and start transmitting as Noor to Britain. A British receiver, Leo Marx, suspects the messages are fake due to their perfection, but Buckmaster proceeds with a plan to deploy agents based on the Nazi-supplied location. Meanwhile, Virginia is directed to a safe house near the Spanish border, and her only way out is over the Alps into Spain, and from there to Portugal, and then London. In the extreme cold, Virginia's wooden leg snaps, yet she continues forward with repairs. Noor is sent to the Dachau concentration camp. Eventually, London figures that Nazis have her code as one the planes fly Flying the replacement agents is shot at by Gestapo. Vera and Maurice are determined to continue supporting the resistance in France. Virginia eventually, with the help of her guide, makes it and gets back to London. Returning to England, Virginia learns about her team and Noor. She confronts Buckmaster and Vera, criticizing the F section's failures to protect their agents and overburdening single operators. She wants more wireless operators to be deployed to the field, and Buckmaster says they'll consider it. Despite her desire to return to France, her real identity is compromised. After she leaves distraught, Buckmaster tells Vera that Robert Alish betrayed the team in France, and Vera was the one who checked him out. Vera is blamed for trusting Father Robert Alicia, but there was no way anyone could have suspected him. So, she gets furious and demands her proper documents and status, feeling discriminated against due to her Jewish heritage. In January 1944, Vera's contributions were finally recognized, and Buckmaster got her citizenship papers and a proper rank on his team. Later, Buckmaster calls her to teach OSS colleagues, including the head of the OSS, William Donovan, their espionage and sabotage techniques. They propose a joint operation, OSS and F section agents working together, the Americans and the British side by side. Virginia aligns with William Donovan when the U.S. aligns with Britain and joins the SOE. Virginia now works as a wireless operator for the Americans in Britain. She was promoted in the OSS and, as per her request, sent back to France before the Jedburgh teams to continue her mission by Donovan. Before her departure, Vera asks Virginia to accompany her to deliver
deliver a message to Noor's mother, explaining Noor's heroism and execution in a concentration camp. She then bids goodbye to Vera and leaves for France. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.